Hi and welcome to Squiz.com, the connected marketplace. For this episode 6, I'll be showing you the latest changes we've made to the platform in the last few weeks. To begin with, we've created a whole new help and documentation center that can help you to understand how the platform works and describes how you can use each of its features. If you go to Squiz.com homepage and clicking on the help link will take you to the help and documentation center homepage. On the homepage, we have these blue boxes that each links to a document within the documentation center where you can find information about an aspect of the platform. For instance, if we clicked on the connecting with organizations link, that will take you to its document and that describes many pieces of information about how you as a person can connect with organizations on the platform as we see here. Each document is broken up into a number of sections and some sections will contain step-by-step -step guides on how to use a certain feature of the platforms. For example, within this grouping your organizations section, we can see there's a number of pieces of information about how to do that and as well as a step-by-step -step guide how to create organization groups so that you can then group different organizations or businesses that you deal with and are connected with on the platform. This gives you just one example of what one document looks like. If we go back to the home page, we'd recommend everyone starting off with the get started and overview document since this describes the broad concepts of using the squiz.com platform. And that includes how you can use the platform to connect with other people as well as organizations. And if you're connecting with people, you can connect with a range of different kinds of people such as friends, family, works, colleagues, uh, business contacts. It also describes how you can connect your business with other businesses such as uh, government bodies, suppliers and customers and other trading partners as well as how a business can connect with its people as well such as employees, customers, fans, executives and sales reps. And the final aspect of the platform is how a business or organization registered on the platform can connect its business systems with other business systems that are also connected into the platform, streamlining and automating data transfer between the different systems. If we go back to the home page, most of the documentation is broken up into four main areas and this includes squiz.com for you. So this covers documents that are relate personally to you using the platform and describes features that help you such as connecting with people as well as sharing different information about yourself and then being able to use the communication tools that the platform provides when talking with other people. In the Squiz for Business section, this describes how to register an organization within the platform as well as using all the features to allow organizations to buy and sell on the platform as well as to market as well as being able to use the customer relationship and human resources features that the platform provides. In the third section we have the Squiz for IT Professionals and this section covers concepts which is designed for people who support an organization. So these people may be uh, data specialists that help support how data is stored in different systems for an organization. It this, it could be for people who support networking and computer systems for an organization. It could do with people who deal with strategies such as business managers and leaders on how to leverage the technologies and features that the platform provides. So if you're one of those people, then these documents would be great a great read for you. The last section we have is the squiz.com for software developers and providers. And this covers documentation that allows software developers to build software and integrate it into the squiz.com platform. And this, the platform API document here contains a lot of technical detail on how they can get their software to to talk with the platform, push and pull organization data and the method in which that can happen. So it is a must read for if you are a software developer developing software or you provide software in the existing marketplace. It is recommended to read the documentation from top to bottom and that's what it's being geared towards. So first read each of the documents about how you can use the platform before trying to register and create a business within the platform. And then after that, then you can learn how to leverage the platform's features being an IT professional and then finally if you're a very technical software developer person uh, looking at the documentation from there. 
Now, if you have any questions or you feel like there's an area of the Help and Documentation Center doesn't cover enough information about the platform, then please let us know by posting within the squiz.com's feed. So that can be found if you click on the profile link within the footer bar and then within the squiz.com profile, click on the feeds button and then post your message on the Squiz Early Adopters feed. The next feature we've added into the squiz.com platform is the ability for organizations to push in purchase orders into the platform and have supplier organizations be able to procure and process those orders and then allow goods to be ordered and then delivered to the originating customer organization. Now, this process is similar to the process we talked about in episode four of the squiz.com update videos, which had allowed customer organizations to pull purchase orders into the platform. So I have a diagram very similar that shows how this process works. So squiz.com is in the middle and then on either side we have, uh, on the left hand side we have Springfield Police which is going to be the customer organization and we have the Cookie Mart which is the supplying organization. Now each of those organizations have their own computer networks and they have their own business system which they use to track and record purchases and sales. Now a business system could be an accounting system, it could be an enterprise resource planning system, it could be a website, it could be a simple database, it's really up to that business how it best stores and tracks purchases and sales, day-to-day -day operations of the business. So in this case, Springfield Police could have an ERP system where they, when they want to purchase something off the Cookie Mart, they would first create a purchase order. So a person within that system would raise a purchase order. Now that purchase order may list several items that they have previously purchased off Cookie Mart. Now in that case, once the order is ready to go and it's approved to be able to send it off to Cookie Mart, the process that the new process that we've introduced into the platform is to allow software to push the purchase order through the platform's API that's called an application programming interface and then the order can go into squiz.com. From there it can be converted into a sales order. Now, once it has been converted into a sales order, that's a Quickie Mart sales order, the platform can then push that sales order across into Quickie Mart's own business system on their end. And so the sales order would travel back through, there could be a connector installed on their computer network or their software could allow the sales order to be imported directly into its system. So this then allows Quickie Mart to then dispatch the goods that have been ordered and then those goods can be delivered back to Springfield Police. Now, by using squiz.com, it allows to automate a number of processes that may otherwise occur using uh, processes such as telephone, fax, emails, or having to log into different websites. Now, if we go back to Springfield Police, and we'll just go back to our purchase order, to allow this a process to occur where the purchase order is pushed by Springfield Police's system, into squiz.com, there's a couple of things that need to allow this to happen. First, Springfield Police's business system software needs to be able to support pushing data into squiz.com. It needs the software within it needs to be written in order to push the orders in. Now, once that has occurs, then it allows for automation to occur within Springfield Police's system. No longer does somebody have to copy or email out the purchase order, they can just click a button or whichever process is most effective within that system in order to transfer the purchase order across into squiz.com. Some business systems may require an add-on such as here if we had a program which could then retrieve the purchase orders and push them into the platform. Alternatively, some business systems such as websites or e-commerce systems could be modified by developers in order to directly push the purchase order. So if that was the case, then that business system would have a direct connection with the API in order to be able to push that purchase order across. In order to allow this process to work, software has to be developed within Springfield Police Computer Network or within the software that they used in order to store their purchase orders in order to be able to push the purchase orders through to squiz.com and onto Cookie Mart as the supplier. Now the good news about this is that this link uses standards 
so a consistent way in order to push purchase orders through, and it can be then leveraged on several suppliers at the other end. Springfield Police doesn't need to worry about how to get the data out into QuickieMart's computer system that's handled by their end. Springfield Police just have to worry about using the API in order to get data into it in this case. Now, in order for the purchase order to be accepted by the Squeeze.com platform, a few things need to be set up first. Both Quickie Mart and Springfield Police must both be registered within the Squiz.com platform and they must have a connection between the two organisations. Now, once a connection has been set up, then Quickie Mart need to assign Springfield Police to a customer account. And the customer account is used by Quickie Mart to specify that Springfield Police is a customer and that all the pricing of Quickie Mart's products can be priced based on the relationship Springfield Police has with Quickie Mart. So prices could be cheaper or dearer based on how often and how much Springfield Police buy off the Quickie Mart. If you if Springfield Police bought a very large volume, they may have better deals on pricing from Quickie Mart, um, whereas if they were only buying say donuts every couple of months or years, then they may only get a retail price. So the customer account defines the relationship and it also defines the records that each that Quickie Mart has for when Springfield Police buy off them. The customer account needs to be imported by Quickie Mart from their system. So that's where that information comes from into the center. And then once a person within the platform has assigned customer account to Springfield Police, then that can allow a trading relationship to be set up. So once a person within Quickie Mart has assigned Springfield Police to a customer account, then when the purchase order gets imported, the platform will be able to determine based on the account what the pricing should be for all the products that have appeared within this purchase order. Now, the final part that the Squiz.com platform needs to do, it needs to be able to find the products that are being listed within the purchase order within Cookie Mart. So Cookie Mart needs to import its products within the platform and then it, the platform needs to be able to match up the purchase order products to Cookie Mart's products. Now there's four ways in which the platform can do that. It can either do that by matching up the, the product codes within the purchase order that exactly match the product codes within Cookie Mart system. Alternatively, within the purchase order, you can put in the supplier product codes that Springfield, when they created that order, to denote the, the products that they're expecting to be purchased off Cookie Mart. Now, the third option is that alternate codes can be imported by Springfield Police into Squiz.com that maps their product codes, the codes that the products that Springfield Police, in this case, have purchased, and what are the codes that matches the Cookie Mart's products. So that can be also done and then Squiz.com can use those what we call product mappings in order to then be able to find the associated products. The fourth option is once an order has been imported, Squiz.com can remember which product purchased by Springfield Police using its own, the Springfield Police's codes matches the Quickie Mart's product codes. And then the platform can use that memory in order to make the purchase orders uh, seamlessly flowing uh, easier and easier. But for this case, the API needs to exactly match up all the product lines within the purchase order to products within Quickie Mart. If the API cannot find one product that cannot match, then it will not allow the purchase order to import. So it's critical that Springfield Police know the codes or they know the products that Quickie Mart sells when they're creating the purchase order within their system and pushing it across. If the API cannot find a match, then it will report that when the purchase order fails to import and it goes back to the software that originally tried to push in the purchase order. So if the purchase order successfully goes into the API, can find it, the API can find all the matching products, then it will convert this purchase order into a sales order. And the sales order confirms a commitment for Springfield Police to buy products off Cookie Mart. Once again, Squiz.com will try to push the sales order out into Cookie Mart's connected business system. And that could be a business system on the cloud or within Cookie Mart's own computer network. It could be using the connector software, the squiz.com connector software to allow this sales order to traverse through the platform using the platform standards and across in, and push that across into the business system. Now, once that occurs, then it's ready for processing on Cookie Mart's and for dispatch and delivery. Now, once a purchase order has been successfully imported into the Squiz.com platform and a sales order has been generated, 
Not only will that sales order go across in the cookie mart, but a copy of the sales order will also get returned in the response of the API request. And so this allows the purchase order that sits within Springfield Police to be compared against the pricing that was actually generated for the sales order at the time. And so that may be relevant in order to update pricing within the purchase order to reflect the real prices that occurred or any other additional information that needs to be uh, referenced to the originating purchase order, which can then be used in order to then match up uh, invoices that are created later down the track. And additionally, just like in episode four of the video, we there is also the ability when the sales order gets created within the platform for it to be sent across to a freight carrier. And if that occurs, uh, Quickie Mart could set up an account with a freight provider such as Smart Freight to allow the sales order to go both into the Quickie Mart's business system as well as the order being sent as the freight order into Smart Freight. The sales order can then go into the other system and then the freight order can then be converted into a consignment note and that consignment note can be then sent across the freight carriers allowing them to be told what goods purchased by Springfield Police need to be delivered from Quickie Mart's warehouses or whichever location has that stock. So that gives you the full workflow to allow customer organizations business system software to push purchase orders in through to squiz.com allowing those orders to then be turned into sales orders and pushed into a supplier system. And using this process can make it easier in order to automate uh, orders flowing between customers and supplier systems without customer organizations having to integrate directly with a number of different pieces of business software. It's an integrate once approach into the platform and then once all organizations have done their one integration, then they can leverage all the cost reductions, the time savings that goes on by having these systems connected up. You can find more information about this by going to the Help and Documentation Center. And if you scroll down to the Platform API page that contains all the technical information and there's a section there for Procure and Send Purchase Orders to Supplier, which once again, we have another diagram that shows that overall process and the technical details in order how to submit purchase orders into the platform, as well as the requirements in order for allow purchase orders to be successfully sent uh, using through the platform. To make it easier for software developers to be able to modify their software to push purchase orders into the platform as well as use other functions of the squiz.com's API, for the Java programming language we have created an open source library which can be embedded within a Java application. So if you go to GitHub, uh, we have created a project called the Squiz Platform J API Java Library and this what allows native classes to be used with a Java application and it cuts down a lot of the code otherwise requiring to be written in order to use the endpoints that the API provides. Within the Java library hosted on GitHub, if we scroll down on the readme on the home page there, you can see real programming examples on how to use the library in order to make calls to the squiz.com platforms API, how to handle responses and also examples of how to push different kinds of data into the platform. So if we scroll down here, uh, there is an example in this case how to import data into the platform. So in this case, we're importing tax code information, which is required for being able to sell products on the platform. And if we scroll down further again, then we have an example of creating a purchase order within Java using the native library and then being able to then push that purchase order into the platform and then receiving a response and processing that response. The library leverages the e-commerce standards documents that we developed in order to make it nice and easy to create purchase order records as well as uh, push them across. There's no need to worry about the low level sending of data across the network. Uh, we, we take that all away so the developers can focus purely on the business logic of getting data into and out of the platform. We'd recommend if you are developing Java applications then to use this library in order to connect with the platform's APIs and have the ability to do, call all the endpoints and all the imports and exports that you can do within the platform at, currently. And this Java library will continue to be developed as new features and improvements are added to the squiz.com platform.
The next improvement we've added to the squiz.com platform has to do with changing your primary login email address. So once you've logged into the platform, if you go into the settings, into the personal options menu and click on this settings menu item, you will see now that the personal email address field has now been greyed out and you no longer have the ability to change it. So we've put in place some security mechanisms to keep you safe and make sure that other people cannot change your account information if you had accidentally left squiz.com open on a computer and walked away. So instead, in order to change your personal email address, you have to use the linked emails feature. So if you click back on your name, go back into the personal options and click on the linked email address menu item. Within the linked email addresses dialog, you need, first need to add the email address that you want to make your primary email address. Now linked email address is also used for another feature and it's where if you have multiple email addresses, they may be personal email addresses or work email addresses, then if somebody within the contacts menu tries to find and connect with you, and then they can use any of those emails that they know you by in order to send a connection request. So that's why you'd use, you can have up to five emails linked to your profile within squiz.com. Not just that, but for any linked email, you can then set that email, that linked email to be become a primary email. So the first step we have to do is type in the email address that we want to change our primary account to. So if this was Abu, he might have, uh, maybe he has another cloud email. So let's just type in Abu at, in this case, it could be an example.com. The first part of this process, in order to add a linked email address, you first must have that email address verified. So once we click on the verify button, that will send an email to that specified email address, and then it will contain a verification code within it. You need to copy that code and then you need to copy or type it in within the verification code text box. Once you've copied the code, click the save button. Now that email appears within the list of linked emails. So if somebody typed in work at quickie.example.com into the contact form, that would then, the platform would be able to then find Abu. So in a case they did it there. Now he wouldn't connect with himself, but another person would do the same thing. Now, additionally, as a part of that, is a, another link that it displays here called set as primary email. So if you, if Abu wanted to log in with that email address he just added, he would just click the set as primary email. Because Abu just recently added that linked email, the platform would not immediately let that become the primary email. Abu has to wait a week before he can set that as the primary email. And the reason behind that is in case Abu had left his computer open and somebody else had then taken over his computer, they could have set their own email as a linked email and appeared on the list. And if the platform had allowed them to set that as a primary email, then he, they could immediately lock out Abu from being able to log in again. So because of there is this one week period of time, it stops the ability for, for malicious people in order to take over your account very easily. When a person tries to change the primary email, an email will also be sent to the previous primary email to notify that somebody is trying to do this attempt. So this will allow you to receive a notification when, when somebody's trying to take over your account and then all you need to do is log back into squiz.com, change your passwords and then be able to continue on to use the platform. And that wraps up the latest changes we've made to the squiz.com platform. If you have any feedback, questions or comments, please go to the squiz.com profile page, click on the feeds and then choose the early adopter feeds uh, and, uh, and post your questions against that. For any other help and advice, you can always go to the new help and documentation center where there's plenty of information to get you going. Until next time, happy squizzing.